you are welcome to another edition of our Sunday School broadcast. This is for Sunday the 10th of January 2021, the second message for the year. Let us pray. Father, we come before you again, O God, thanking you because of your goodness, thanking you because of your mercy, thanking you because of your loving kindness, Lord, which has brought us into this fine, wonderful new year. Lord, we bring this exercise before you. Jehovah God, a time that we share your goodness, your word with your people. Lord, I pray, Jehovah God, that every ear that is listening be circumcised, every heart be prepared. Lord, that your word, O oh God, will achieve that which you have proposed in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. I receive grace. I receive anointing. I receive all the help that the Holy Ghost will give me so that this work, Lord, will be done and done according to your own expectation. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Our topic for discussion today is Abraham the Intercessor. Abraham the Intercessor. But before we go into that, remember for those of you who were present last week, I promised that I was going to continue the message that we started on weight. We did that message because our quarterly was not out. So, but this week it is out. And therefore, we're going to go back to it. But before then, I'm going to wrap up the message for last week very quickly. We did read from Isaiah. 40 verses 30 to 31 that's where we read but today we're just going to read from Ephesians we're going to read from Ephesians chapter 4 verses 12 to 14 to start with Ephesians 4 12 to 14 I'm going to ask my daughter Evangeline who by God's grace is present today to help us with that reading Eva. Okay. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 12 to 14 says, For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we have read, like I said, last week we discussed to wait. And Isaiah 40, 30 to 31 says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now, once you are a Christian, once you are born again, God has made you an eagle. Once we come into Christ, we become eagles. The Bible says all things have passed away and all things have become new. What does an eagle do? It flies. And so on and so forth. But it says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Number one, they shall mount up with eagles. Yes. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And we said that in 2021, God says, What we'll do is wait. Learn to wait learn to spend time with him learn to spend time with him so that we will run so that we will walk wait run walk where are we walking to and where are we running to 
The Bible says wrong because God knows that most of us are not where we're supposed to be. Most of us are way, way behind God's expectation for us to survive this year and beyond by God's grace. We have to run to catch up with God. Jesus is far ahead of most of us. We need to run to go and meet him. And then we start working with him. That is what is going to take us through. That is why we have read Ephesians chapter 4. Where it says that God has appointed apostles, teachers, prophets, all these people to help us. God has equipped us with his spirit so that we will be able to be where God wants us to be. And where is that? To the fullness of the stature of Christ that we will no longer be babes tossed to and fro. There is a prophecy. Somebody says, hey, your uncle that is overseas is a witch. That is why you are not progressing. And we do all sorts of things because we believe the prophecy. Trash. Most of the time, trash. Rubbish. God wants us to catch up with Jesus. What does that mean? We want to be where Jesus wants us to be. In knowledge. In anointing. In praying. In studying. Walking steadily with God. That is where we are going. They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength again to run, to catch up with Jesus and to begin to walk with him. So that this is not the year where we are tossed, tossed to and fro. This is not the time when we believe every prophecy. Jesus says, hey, in the end times, there is going to be a lot of deception. Deceivers, false prophets. That is one of the marks of the end times and they're going to multiply. And you and I therefore need to have run and we have met with Jesus and then we're going to walk with him. And as we walk with him, then we will not be deceived. The question is, does every Christian have to manifest at the same level? No. Where God wants you to be, the height that God wants you to grow to, the level of knowledge that God wants you to acquire, when you get there, then you're walking with Him. Everybody is supposed to raise the dead, but not all of us will grow to that level, and God understands that. When we go to school, in those days they used to say, oh, this person is first, second, third, and then thirtieth. And then get to the proper, the 40th and the 41st and the 42nd people who will fail and repeat the class. God knows that. He has given us various abilities depending on what He Himself has seen or put in us. But He expects each one of us to get to that level that He wants us to get to. That is what we studied last week and we therefore will need to get to the study for this week. And our topic, like I said, is Abraham the intercessor. We're going to ask Evangeline again to read Genesis 18, 16 to 32. Genesis 18, 16 to 32. Okay. Then the men rose from there and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to send them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord, to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. And the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I will know. 
Then the men turned away from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. And Abraham came near and said, Would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Suppose that there were fifty righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the fifty righteous that were in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? So the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed, now I am but dust and ashes. I have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose there were five less than the fifty righteous. Would you destroy all the city for lack of five? So he said, If I find there forty-five, I will not destroy it. And he spoke to him yet again and said, Suppose there should be forty found there. So he said, I will not do it for the sake of forty. Then the Lord said, Let not the Lord be... Then he said, Sorry, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose thirty should be found there. So he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. Okay. And Abraham brought it down to ten. And God still promised that he will not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah if he found ten righteous people. Now, the question is, why did God bother to tell Abraham? Why did he bother? In um, God did that because God said in Jonah, the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verse sorry, the Amos 3 7, that's right. Amos 3 7. God said there, I will not do anything positive or negative until I have informed my servants the prophets wow what a God we have God said before I destroy a city before I punish a people I will inform my people who are there people who are looking after that place People that I have put in charge of that place. Let me tell you, we are discussing Abraham the intercessor. As soon as you become a child of God, God expects you and I to become intercessors for wherever He has put us. God expects us to begin to pray for our friends for our families, for our villages, for our communities, for our states, for our countries. That is one job that God has placed in your hands and in my hands. Let me tell you something. Before punishment comes to a family and there is a Christian there, God would have hinted it to that person. Before punishment comes to a village, even if there is one Christian, God would have hinted it, shown it to that person one way or the other. Whether we understand God's signal and pick it up and run with it is a different thing. But God has said in his word, and he will not change it, that he will not do anything positively or negatively in a place until he has sounded a warning to his own people. Prophet here, every one of us is a prophet. There are people who are a few that are called to the office of prophets, we know. But as soon as your name is written in the book of life, God regards you as a prophet there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, let us look at Matthew 5, verse 6. Matthew 5, 6, just one verse. Evangeline. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are looking at the intercessor. Number one, let us go a little back. Who is an intercessor? He says it's a person who intervenes on behalf of another, especially by prayer. 
That is the Oxford Dictionary. Somebody who intervenes. The other words used are mediator, go between, peacemaker, middleman. Do you know that the Bible calls Jesus a mediator? It calls the Holy Spirit a mediator. So, because we are Jesus's, because the Bible says as it is, so are we in this world. We are meant to be mediators. God allows us, by His grace, in His mercy, to intervene, to come between Him and our people. Can you imagine the privilege that God has given us? And the responsibility also that the God of heaven and earth, before he does something, he will say, Joe, this is what I'm going to do. Joe, what do you want? You know why? Because the earth God has given to man. He's in heaven. He's also on earth, everywhere. But the responsibility of deciding what happens on earth God has given to his church I was listening to somebody the other day and said something that was very profound he said that God is not in charge of the earth no Bible says that Satan is the God small letter G of this world and that's in the New Testament who is God primarily in charge of Jesus is the head of the church Jesus is the head of the church. Jesus tells the church what to do. The church, in return, tells Jesus what to do on earth. Without prayer, nothing happens. That is God's law. God has given us a lot of privilege to ask Him, to receive from Him, to command Him even, to decide what happens around us. Why are there so many Christians and things are not still going right? We'll come to that. But let us look at Isaiah chapter 62. Isaiah 62, beginning to read from verse 1, 1 to 7. Okay. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a lamp that burns. The Gentiles shall see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. You shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no longer be termed forsaken nor shall your land any more be termed desolate, but you shall be called Hephzibah, and your land Bula. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. I have set watchmen on your wall, O Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. They shall never hold their peace day and night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent and give him no rest till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Mary Baba. Look, <laughs> God said, I have set watchmen upon the walls of Calabar, upon the walls of Abba, upon the walls of Ihechoa, upon the walls of Bini. As long as, like we said before, as long as there are Christians there, God has made you watchmen upon the walls. And God said, do not give me rest. Don't let me, God, rest until I have established righteousness in your place, in your family, in your country. Wow. He says, the will of God is not all the kind of bad things that are happening in our communities people being killed a lot of robbery a lot of wickedness sexual immorality no the will of god is righteousness that's why jesus says we should pray that as it is in heaven 
so shall it be done on earth. The will of God is that as it is in heaven, so shall it be in my family, so shall it be in my house, so shall it be in my village, so shall it be in my town in the communities. That is the perfect will of God. That Satan, who God has said is the God of this world, and the Bible says he, he walks around, he walks about, seeking whom he may devour. But he says we should resist him steadfastly. That is why God has left you and I upon earth. That where we are, Satan will not function. That is the plan of God. He said, I have set watchmen. He said, Don't worry. I have set watchmen upon your walls. These people will not. These people should not rest until I have established goodness and righteousness in your land. Unfortunately, in Ezekiel 22, 30, God said, I sought for a man, though I have put people there, but I am looking for them because they are sleeping. They have disappeared. They, they are not doing what they are supposed to do. They are leaving the world, okay, they are unbelievers. They will all die. Is that what an intercessor does? No. Like Abraham, interce Abraham interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah. If you read that scripture closely, he wasn't just interceding because of Lot only. There was just Lot, his wife, and two daughters. Abraham brought it down to 10. He started from 50 and he went down to 10, hoping that there will be 10 more righteous people and God will spare the whole community. But because God didn't find 10 righteous men, he had to release his anger on that sinning community. My brother, my sister, don't let us be in a village and the anger of God comes onto that village just because God looked for us and he didn't see us. Those he has boasted. He says, and as we read, God has boasted, he said, I have sent watchmen. I have put intercessors. They will pray day and night so that righteousness will reign in our community. And if we sleep, the Bible says, when men slept, the enemy came and so tears on the farm. That is what has happened in a lot of places. Abraham did not let that happen. That is why at least, though he did not achieve his whole aim of rescuing the whole city, but at least he got Lot out. Praise the Lord. My brother, God is saying, I have sent watchmen upon your walls. I have set watchmen upon the walls of Umayya. Before then, let us look at 1 Timothy 2, 1-3. 1 Timothy 2, 1-3. <clears throat> First Timothy 2, 1 Timothy 2, 1-3 says, Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do we see it again? God said we should intercede for all men, including our enemies. Jesus says, pray for your enemies. Intercede for those who persecute you. He said, when your enemy is hungry, feed him. When he is thirsty, give him drink. Praise the Lord. Let all, The intercessor is not that person who will say, God, kill them all. I said it. Like Jonah. Jonah, God sent him to go and preach to Nineveh. And there was so much revival and the people repented. And Jonah got angry. Jonah said, hey, I knew it that you forgive them. So if he didn't want God to forgive them, why did he go in the first place? And a lot of Christians and intercessors are like that. God deal with them. The kind of prayers we pray these days, I wonder where we are going to. 
people see a fly goes past is an enemy and they would begin to bind demons that are not there we begin to cast spells oh my god you are an intercessor you are like jesus you are supposed to be interceding for these people some somebody said to me i have to kill them before you kill me who told you they can kill you who told you they can kill you why do you say such a rubbish thing a child of god filled with the holy ghost tongue talking and demon chasing and you're confessing with the same mouth that they will kill you no they cannot kill you they that do know their god they shall be strong and they shall do exploits to the virtue to the stature to the fullness of christ that is where we are going this year therefore an intercessor is the one who has compassion where we read in matthew 5 6 says that they have hunger and thirst that's the quality number one of an intercessor you have to hunger and thirst for righteousness in your community in your village in the country in the state hunger and thirst be angry that there is no righteousness that's number one number two god says they will not rest day or night the intercessor will persist the intercessor will persist the intercessor does not sleep the intercessor persists until righteousness reigns in the community and when you are like that god has a reward for you he says that there that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled number one you yourself will be filled with righteousness god will transform you unto righteousness excuse me if after five years of being a christian and being an intercessor you are still full of anger and all those things you were not interceding no you didn't go there you didn't go there the first thing as you persist praying for righteousness is god will change you first unto righteousness unto holiness and then he says they shall be filled when you will then see the righteousness the answer to your prayer you will be filled with joy with peace because you know you'll be filled with faith because you know god answers prayer and it will overflow to your own personal and individual and family prayer because when you see god answer your prayer for the community you are strengthened your faith will rise and then you can begin to believe god for your own needs we shall be filled be the abraham of your village be the abraham of the next town be the abraham of your family so that things will get better this year we need to wait on god we need to run and not be weary we need to walk and not faint but one of the ways to do it is while waiting and fasting we will the intercessors praise the lord are you a child of god have you become an ego for jesus if not pray this prayer after me dear lord jesus i come to you as a sinner forgive my sins write my name in the book of life cancel it from the book of death come into my heart be my lord and savior help me to learn to wait on you and to intercede for my people thank you for answering me because i prayed in jesus name amen father behold this one oh god and behold your people every one of us that is listening every one of us that will listen jehovah god i praise anyone sick in the body lord the bible says you sent jesus and he healed us we pray jehovah god that you stretch your hands lord god upon your people and heal each and every one of us thank you for answering us because we have prayed in jesus name amen